So we're back and here is the next article that I found. This one is Caribbean companies must view AI as positive. It would have been published what on the 19th by Raphael John Lal of The Guardian. Banks are now using artificial intelligence to determine how the credit worthiness of their customers. In some countries, there are already trials for self-driving cars to do delivery for businesses and robots have now become a staple in production lines and factory floors. U.S. business magazine Forbes, in an article dated 17, July 17, 2023, spoke about how AI is revolutionizing stock investing. According to that Forbes article, with AI power tools, investors can assess market trends, monitor company performance, and evaluate risk factors more efficiently than before. This is said by the managing director of architects of the Caribbean Enterprise and Strategic Solutions, Ricardo Fraser. He said that despite criticisms of potential job losses, AI technology replaces human beings it's a positive it's positive impact outweighs its negative effects so he trying to say to the people basically what all technology people say don't be afraid of ai embrace it and it will have more positive than negative i am going to ask you straight up people still afraid of it i mean you see that last part you talk about in terms of replacing jobs? That's, that's the part that people probably s- not skeptical, but more than skeptical. But, you know, as you say, probably afraid of, you know, because if you're bringing uh, AI to come in and do uh, somebody's job, if it's, uh, if it's high level, low level, whatever, you know, it's it's like you're going to put me on the bread line and if you're thinking about you know, you're going to pay the bills at the end of the month. People I watch would be skeptical with, about that. I watched an interview with Sam earlier this week, Sam Altman from OpenAI. Yeah. And he said, he said, listen, the media does what it's supposed to do, you know. The media had a whole big frenzy and a big all sorts of words and whatnot about ChatGPT when, when we first started to make waves. But naturally, that's supposed to happen and then it dies down to the things that we're supposed to do. And then you're saying, will we ever get to the point where we have a sentient AI? And he said, yeah, at the rate we go in, it will happen eventually. And guess what? The, the media will take it and it will cause a big hullabaloo and then it will die back down to the mean, which is it will be used by humans because humans are too nuanced to be replaced. And that's his view. Of course, he's saying that from open AI perspective because, well, money had to make, right? He can't tell them no. But I, I tend to want to believe the last part which humans are too nuanced we too complicated things we do things too differently at two at different times to end up becoming replaced by computers it just i don't think it i don't i just don't think we will allow it to happen whether it's by pushback or whether it's by regulation or whether it's by some sort of new way of handling things or whether it's just by the population that will drop in by plenty because people don't want to have children anymore and all of that something because humanity has just proven it years after year after year after year that we just find different ways to one destroy the world and also try to make the world um a better place or different and that's that's my that's my um, yeah. belief <sighs> Yeah, I understand, I understand what you mean, I understand where you're coming from, you know, but... Like, like imagine, think of music, right? Yeah. Every year you ask yourself, now this had to be the peak of music, there's how nobody could create anything new after this. Well, 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 not really. <laughs> it's the opposite. Yeah, but, you know, As one, now, like, this one, this is what I listened to now, <laughs> the peak was 10 years ago. <laughs> Well, I okay, don't, I okay, don't think okay. the peakers that you know, are probably old uh, from an age probably right. shouldn't yeah, L- Let me not call the peaker music. <laughs> let me let me say I thought I heard everything that they could possibly do. I thought yeah, I yeah. I thought I thought I would have experience, but for some somehow somebody creates something new ish, sort of. I mean yeah. it's still building on what I had before, but it, it it might be very very annoying that mumble rap exists, right? Very, very annoying. But the fact that it exists 
somebody saw it fit to go and mumble behind a microphone to a beat and people like it. Why do people yeah. like it? Because humanity is just weird. So I I I don't think AI is going on going to I mean with the adoption of AI and whatever, you know, it'll bring productivity and efficiency, but at the same time as just, you know, it will have that pushback, you know, and it will be interesting to see how governments or organizations deal with it because say you're bringing an AI system. So kind of similar to remember last week we were talking about the online the online payment system where part of it is um digital but it's still like the cash that are coming in to to, right. to yeah, do yeah, the yeah. actual the manual payment. You know, so it's uh, it'll mm-hmm. be similar to that how you handle the whole change management process. We're gonna do with this person, you know, and then the political side of it will come in if you if you go and implement this in a certain area or whatever, you know, and you're saying these people are gonna lose their jobs or they're gonna retrain or whatever. That is potential votes you might lose, you might lose support. So you don't know if what any back has some people yeah. mind or you right. Know? So here you have an argument for that, right? Here we are. <laughs> it is a weird argument, but yeah. work with me. Losing votes is a risk that um every government had to take, right? Every government had to take a risk, right? It has some people closed on Karen in nineteen seventy five to to and all these sugarcane farmers. They was vexed, however. It has some people closed on Petrochin. It has some people who closed down um, URP, all sorts of things at the risk of losing jobs, but they were doing it because they had to, they had to, they had to, you had to shake the arm, you had to rock the boat some, somehow. And mm. in politics, what I, what I believe is you had, to, you had to strategically think which boat you're going to rock that wouldn't capsize. And with AI, somebody some politician is going to rock the boat because, as I said, historically speaking, mm. you always had to do something. Humans just just do weird things. And that's, that's what's make us human. We do unexpected stuff and experiment and rock the boat and do whatever. So somebody go rock the boat. Whether we see it now or later, somebody go rock it. And guess what? We here. Yeah, I mean... You know, as we cynical, that somebody might be the person who get some money from the lobbyist to be like, hey, this AI thing is the future. Look, some dollars and again, campaign. That is, <laughs> that is human again, because yeah. now the person who had plenty of money have to decide, am I going to do this legitimately or am I going to do this by making a deal or making some alliance or some kind of thing like that? And you could trust, you could trust that humanity will surprise you. Every yeah. single time. Yeah. But here's, I mean, one of the, here's one of the things I say. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, overall, I don't think we, I don't think we, they are at a point where you could, you know, wholeheartedly replace AI with humans. Right now, it's kind of like a tool they could use to help um, supplement some of the work that you do, you know. So even when they talk about self-driving cars and doing deliveries, it have a lot of issues with that. It had accidents, it had people that would just literally steal mm-hmm. stuff and not pay. You know, tell people vandalize stuff. It's, and even things in the stock market. Like me as somebody who's looking at the stock market, I'm not going on wholeheartedly just use an AI tool and say, all right, this tool tell me invest in Apple at this um, particular point in time. And I'm going on mm-hmm. wholeheartedly do it. You know, you'll use it as a tool to help you analyze and make certain decisions. But I don't think we are at that point yet, you know. It's still at the point as a very effective tool that could help you save time, but I don't think it could replace a human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's, here's, well, he, they asked him some questions. They asked him a lot of questions. So I'll just f- f- focus on one part. He said, um, the people that build AI, AI are also being affected. They are working on artificial super intelligence. There is a science fiction concept that there will be a point of no return where the AI or machines become aware and a lot of experts believe that that concept is already becoming a reality. The world will reach some point where there is an AI super intelligence. This AI, which, uh, which will be the 1,000 times more powerful than ChatGPT and AI technology we see today, there is a concern that this can even control the stock market. He concluded by saying that AI will have a positive impact not only, not only on business but on society in general. But there must be legislative and other systems that 
will guide how it evolves. That that's just a smart statement. What's this man's name? Let me give him a clap. Who's 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 by him? Yeah. And managing director, Ricardo Frazier. He's saying, he's saying good stuff, and he's saying stuff that people have to start to consider. Instead of running from it, we had to start to guardrail it. Put some guardrails on it. It's like fire. When they invented fire, I sure they burned down a forest once. And then it was like, yo, when we light any fires, don't light it in dry season. Um, around mm-hmm. these things. That, that's one guardrail. And then some little rules came in as they go along, but some fires had to take place. And I, okay. I'm a, well, I, I kind of pragmatic where you had to break stuff to learn stuff. In today's digital age, every business is a strong online presence to reach new customers and stay competitive. But not every business needs a complex website or a full-fledged e-commerce solution. At Make It Simple TT, we understand that every business has unique needs and we offer a range of tailored solutions to fit those needs. Over the years, we've helped many businesses. Our services include website design and development. We create a professional and user-friendly website like these that represent your brand and drives results. Invoicing and payment processing. We can streamline your billing process with a user-friendly invoicing system that integrates seamlessly with most payment gateways and you can receive online payments easily. We also do automated order forms which allows you to collect orders online and customer information effortlessly and send back automated emails, notifications and reminders and then you just have to make the sale at the end. And in some cases, we offer custom software development where we can create a specialized software system that meets your business's specific needs. But the key to all this is that we make it simple. If it's not easy for you to use, then we fail. So you can contact us today to learn more about how we can help make your business more successful. You can WhatsApp us at 1-868-308-8799 or you can visit maketsimplett.com forward slash business.